<sighs> All right, a little rusty, been a while, but we got power, we got internet, I'm back up to full power. Let's pick up where we left off. So that said, thank you very much to Dusty G for joining the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com forward slash TJ Omega. I am planning big things there to give patrons a lot more. If I, if I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you know if it pans out. It's going to take a lot, but I appreciate everyone who is supporting there and sticking by me. This is, uh, this is how I'm able to keep doing this. So thank you guys very much for pitching in. Even if it's just a little bit, it all helps. All right. I missed something huge while I was, you know, in the middle of a massive Cat 4 hurricane. I missed PulseCon. Now, I had just enough internet to get the pre-orders I wanted, but I have lost the opportunity to actually talk about all the Transformer stuff that was revealed, so we gotta go ahead and do that, alright? And I know there's one thing in particular. There's one thing in particular, because my ads blew up. But, we'll get to that. For now, Lightbright. <laughs> I like out of nowhere, just out of like out of left field, they decided like uh, we're gonna do wall art light bright for Transformers, so you can get this lovely light up wall panel with a ton of light bright pegs that can form either Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, or the Autobot symbol in this lovely like super weird like 16 bit graphic style. Uh, it's like a hundred bucks because it's, it's basically just a gigantic LED board with interchangeable lights and. This is the kind of thing where I'm sure people are going to come up with some really weird, crazy things for it. And I'm kind of like, I'm into it for that. Nothing I'd ever get for myself, but the results are going to be fun. But it's not the toy we're really interested in, is it? No, no, no. We're, we are interested in the real reveals. So we're going to start off. And we're just going to go in whatever order TFW has put these images up as. <laughs> uh, we're just going to go, uh, go, go through the, the slideshow. Uh, Shattered Glass Soundwave. This is a pretty obvious choice for Shattered Glass. What was not obvious was which mold it was going to be using. Siege or the Netflix mold. And to everyone's joy, it is the Netflix mold. Which means, most importantly, it is free from the exclusivity contract that held it down with Walmart. Meaning, the door is open for a highly demanded re-release of Soundwave. Would not surprise me in the least if that happened. For now, though, we have we have Soundwave in his shattered glass, white and blue colors, headband included. Uh, we also get Laserbeak and uh, the Meme Machine Ravage uh, done up with their Siege figures. Kind of weird. It's like it's Siege. Uh, it's Siege. Ah, Laserbeak. Words hard. Been a while uh, because it's got that screen. It's got the canopy head, which is always weird to me i never understood like uh why would you go back to that mold we have like the normal one but whatever it's whatever it's a great little package um uh yeah i had enough to pre-order i had enough internet to pre-order what i wanted from pulse i got just about everything you're about to see <laughs> uh so i got this in too because i don't go for much shattered glass but i do really like shattered glass sound wave there is a part of me that feels like he should always be a van because I like the part of Shattered Glass where things are different than they normally are. But this is like a tangent universe of Shattered Glass, so we'll give it a pass. It just looks nice, right? Looks nice in the box, too. It like really stands out from that dark box. Too bad it'll never see a store shelf. Uh, the PulseCon exclusive set, this one was shown off a long time ago, but hey, we get to see it again, and this time we actually get to order it. It's coming out next month. Uh, Orion Pax and Alpha Trion with Vector Sigma. Yeah, I I, I feel like uh, I feel like every cup mold is just destined to be uh, Alpha or uh, Orion Pax at some point. What I love about the set, what I love about the concept is that what what you know uh, or the like the the bond these two have comes from the fact that uh, Orion Pax was rescued and rebuilt by Alpha Trion into Optimus Prime. Because it's using this 86 cup mold, the disassembly gimmick is still present, meaning you actually can repair uh, uh, Orion Pax as Alpha Trion, which I think is actually kind of a clever little touch. For all the remolding that this toy has done, do we still need the Energon goodies? 
I mean, it's opaque plastic now. It doesn't even look like Energon goodies. It looks like he's got a sippy cup. It looks like he's got a juice box. Like, it's, it doesn't make sense anymore. Retool, please. All right. Yeah, and then Alpha Trine, we've seen already. He still looks really, really cool. Uh, yeah, there's the repair scene. Yeah, and then Vector Sigma. Vector Sigma getting an actual, like, official toy release, which is really cool. All right, so we've seen all this before. Let's get to some stuff that, like, took everyone off guard. So uh, we did have computer listings for a lot of this, but we hadn't seen any of it. Credit where credit's due. Very few of these things in this uh, in this presentation are things we knew about. Hasbro kept the lid on pretty much everything outside of computer listings. No leakers got a hold of it. No, uh, no toy thieves on YouTube got reviews of it. No, these are just, you know, Has Hasbro got to reveal things, which is, you know, kind of a nice change. So, Core Class Sludge. He is very stunted in the articulation and very kibble-loaded, as they even admitted, for very good reason that we'll get to here in a minute. But, yeah, he looks okay, outside of just the fact that he's... Uh, very, very hindered by what uh, they're going for with these Dinobots. Yeah, he looks fine. I mean, a core class, I'm not going to expect too much, so some loss in articulation is not going to bother me too badly, especially considering what we're getting. I'm going to keep alluding to it, even though you all know it. I don't know why, because it's been out for days now. I'm, I'm so far behind. Uh, this is the only one I skipped, the core class Sound Blaster which they actually pointed out they're going animation accurate with the chest being purple instead of red. They know the toy would be red. It's just a black sound wave. Uh, you know, there's nothing really uh, unique or special here. The, te the tape doesn't transform, so it's not like we're getting a new cassette for that size. It's just, well, we kind of are. It's buzzsaw now, but still. Um, just moving on. So Slug. Slug's got some, <laughs> Slug's got such a tiny head. Um, but yeah, he definitely came out better than uh, Sludge because he's not trying too hard to... Uh, he, he doesn't have to carry the bulk of what these guys are going to do. I can't, I'm gonna, it's going to keep alluding to it. You hear me? Uh, Tail becomes a really weird weapon. Uh, it's just a theme in the core classes. They're all going to get weird weapons no matter what. Uh, but he doesn't look as bad. He, you know, he definitely looks a lot more like himself. And yeah, the Triceratops, he's got a little bit of a... He's got a little bit of a gap issue there in the chest. He looks like his uh, his carcass has been eaten just a little bit. Just a little bit. But otherwise, you know, he looks fine. So, yeah. Well, what they're going for here is... Uh, out of nowhere, we found out that these core class Dinobots are actually going to combine. Which not only means that we're going to have, for the first time since Prime, we're going to have a tiny... We're going to have a small scale... Well, I should say for the first time since uh, since uh, the last night, we're going to have a small-scale combiner, but that one was kind of depicted as like a normal-sized transformer. You get my point. You get my point. It's gonna, it's the first time in a long time we've gotten a combiner at such a small scale. It's going to be Volcanicus, but it's not going to be the same Volcanicus. So we can pull up... Oh, no, that's the poster. Yeah, we can pull up this image where we can see the torso mode. And I can scan through to see how they combine. So Slug here is the one becoming the torso where, you know, normally you would expect it to be Grimlock. It's actually a really weird change. You know, uh, and they're forming a two-piece torso. Hey, Lyokaiser. Lyokaiser. So what's going on here? So why is Grimlock not the main piece of this torso? Well, number one, this means we're getting a sixth Dinobot in this line. We know the name Scar is already in the computer listings. It's just a matter of who Scar is going to turn into. I'll examine that at a later date. For now, though, the speculation here is because we are using a Triceratops, or like a, you know, like a, uh, that style of, at least that style of dinosaur is a torso, everyone is calling for a Dino King out of this. And me, I would like say, like, save it until we get some kind of Monstructor. Or, or, like, please, like, don't let it be this small because, like, my, you know, because, like, like, I need someone for my HasLab Victory Saber to beat up. And this, he'd just step on this Dino King. But if that's what they're going for and we're eventually going to see Dino King out of these, that would actually be super cool. That would be super cool. And explain where Grimlock is here because he would be a leg in that combiner. So, 
if he becomes a leg, if they show off Grimlock and he has a leg mode, we know what's going to happen here. Still super cool. At least they're doing something different. That's all I really want. If you're going to do multiple characters at different size, if you're going to do the same character at different size classes, just give me something different out of them. That's all I ask. All right. We got the full reveal of the final Stunticon breakdown. Is it just Breakdown's fate to always be the worst one out of the Stunicons? I swear, that happened in Combiner Wars. He had the worst mold, and now he's just a remold of Wild Rider, and Wild Rider's engineering is not great either. I already went into that. Uh, we also have uh, Evo Fusion, which is now what they're calling, like, pulling parts off and using them as weapons. We've been doing that for a long time, Hasbro. Never needed a fancy name. So, um, yeah, he's fine, fine. He's got the same annoying backpack that needs, that it's just, that looks just too messy. Um, the, the spoiler, I think, looks silly. I don't, I don't think it's convincing. Uh, yeah, car's okay. Car's okay. At the very least, he's just, like, the most dull out of the, out of the Stunticons, which is a shame for the one that they saved for last. Oh, well. It'll make a nice back of Menasaur's leg. That's all I'll say. Needle Nose, finally. After failing to get voted for two fan votes in a row, Needle Nose actually has an actual release. Congratulations. And they're going all out with this Needle Nose because we are also getting his target masters, Zigzag and Sunbeam, which is pretty... <laughs> we already had it... We already had it, like, beaten into us through one of Hasbro's prior, like, behind-the-scenes posts. That, like, it takes a lot to get that Target Master into the budget. So to get two in there, that's, uh, that probably took some doing. It's probably the reason why Needle Nose is also pretty bare-bones when it comes to, uh, transformation engineering. He looks pretty good here. Like, yeah, he looks spot-on to Needle Nose. Uh, but you can see, like, he's just... He's wearing his jet on his back, which is what the original toy did. You know, he's just kind of folded up underneath it, which is what the original toy did. So it's not doing like a top spin twin twist situation where it's going like well above and beyond its original articulation and design. It's trying to emulate it, possibly for better or worse. I want to see this in hand to see how the transformation feels. And if it's fun to mess with, then I, I don't care. Like then all the power to it. Uh, but yeah, I, I do think it is cool that it's getting that he's getting everything. Like he's a fully packaged, fully realized needle nose. I do think it's kind of cute that uh, that Sunbeam actually is sculpted with his own little rifle. Like his target master also has a gun of his own. Neat little touch. All right, so good on good on needle nose. You finally made it. God, we can we just talk about how dumb the packaging has gotten? What's the point? What's the point of an open box if that's all you're going to show of the toy? I know it's like an anti-theft thing. What it feels like, it feels like Hasbro saw all the headless silver streaks and all the vandalism that's going on with Transformers hanging on the shelf. And instead of going, okay, okay, maybe the plastic window needs to return. No, no, they've done this, which feels like a stopgap because the design of the box, the printing of the background is not in any way invocative of what's happening to the toy. Like, there's no there's no attempt to, like, make it look like this is intentional. So it feels like something that is a last-minute change to the packaging layout that they didn't plan on. It's just the fastest way they could correct this problem without adding plastic to the packaging. Um, yeah, I still call hypocrite when it comes to the uh, the environmentalism going on here. That's a whole other video. So let's, uh, let's just move on. Hang on. You know. All right. I'm not going to say much about him yet. <laughs> okay. He's the best looking hot shot we've gotten. 
Yes. But I look at the toy. I still have my reservations. All right. I still have my concerns when it comes to the toy. I am not. I'm waiting until Hasbro's designer does one of the behind the scenes Instagram posts. And then we'll talk in detail about what's going on with this hot shot. Um, for now, I'm just going to say I'm looking at how the legs engineer. I'm looking at the size of the backpack. And I have worries. That's all I'm going to leave it at. I at least like that, yes, he has his engine gun. He has his visor. He has his axle zooka. He pretty much has everything except his minicon. But even then, he has a minicon port on the back. You know, um, I don't know if an actual, like, original uh, jolt would actually fit in there. You're free to try if you get your hands on one. Evo Fusion. All right. Yeah, and there's ridiculous box design. I could definitely use more paint on the lower legs, too. I'll say that, too. I'll say that, too. But I'll keep most of my thoughts for another time when I can when I can talk about this more fairly. I want, I want to know, like... A little bit of how this toy got developed and why some choices were made before I go into like a whole diatribe. All right, the Junkions begin. So all those deluxe Junkion listings we saw, we finally have a payoff for, and it is in a brand new theme of Weaponizer. And to do it with Junkions is brilliant because yeah, that's how they worked in the original cartoon. Parts fly off, they put the parts back on. You know they. You know, it, it works out. Like, it actually makes sense for them. Uh, Scrap Hook here is also going a few extra miles because not only does he disassemble, but, you know, into extra parts you can use elsewhere, he also does not need to part form to transform, and the front half of him can dislodge in order to combine with the front half of some other vehicle. So you can make crazy Mad Max creations out of all this. And from the poster we saw, we'll look at the poster at the end. Um, from the poster we saw, he uh, there's a Mad Max car on the way. There's a motorcycle with a sidecar. Who knows what else they're going to come up with because this is actually a super cool idea. It feels like they took all the lessons from the, from the weaponizers uh, and all their iterations. Fossil, fossilizers, uh, modulators... And they kind of all rolled all the good stuff together and then just fixed all the wrong stuff. So this looks super cool. And someone has a leaf blower outside. It's very rude. I did not ask for a leaf blower. Alright. So yeah, this is a super cool... Super cool toy, super cool design and engineering. I'm really eager to get more of these and see all the crazy things they can make. Tarn. Ha 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 ha. IDW 1.0 getting some love and like uh, probably one of the best parts of IDW 1.0. I'm a big fan of these like mid-level Decepticon threats popping up. Like higher than Megatron, but not to Unicron. That's what I mean by mid-level threat. And Tarn definitely suits that. He looks fantastic. Um, yeah, super cool design. Like, it looks spot on to the character. Uh, admittedly, I don't have, like, the character reference next to me. But, like, it looks it, it looks like how I want Tarn to look. Tank mode looks great. Looks absolutely ferocious. They made a big deal about... Here, I'm going to go back to these because... I, I'm going to go back to these. Uh, they made a big deal about how he has no backpack kibble and no hollow parts. And if you look at the turnaround co turnarounds and the behind-the-scenes posts from Tarn, yeah, everything is screwed together. There's no, like, big gaps in his forearms or his thighs. Uh, behind him, there's no huge gaps in anything. Uh, he's as clean and solid-looking as a Transformer has, <laughs> has been in a long time long time like they wanted tarn to come out good and they came out great really did the really did him justice uh i've seen him recolored into into bludgeon someone did the uh, digibash to make sure to make that happen and it does explain why some details are not accurate like the eye is caved in on the chest there so yeah i could actually see that and it actually looks really cool it actually looks really cool 
At least as a modern style bludgeon goes. Still waiting for my uh, orange samurai to return properly. Uh, yeah, so uh, whoever... Can the stock photo guy be fired? Because <laughs> this is a terrible pose. And this is the what ended up on the box. This looks terrible. Like, this does not present the toy well at all. <sighs> at least his packaging isn't screwed up. He's not buried in it for, for unknown reasons. Lyo Convoy. Oh, I'm sorry. Leo Prime. This one's cool. All right, so it's basically just a recreation of the original toy at modern Voyager scale and budget. That's pretty much what's going on here. It's still got the tonfos. It's still got the guns that pop off of the lion mane. It's pretty. It's got everything pretty much exactly where it stands. It looks like it's even got the... It may even have the Matrix sculpted in. It does look like it's a separate door. Like, it just, yeah, it just straight up looks like a really nice, ver you know, really nice take on Lyo Convoy. Until we get to the lion face. Oh, no. Oh, no. What happened? What happened? This is the fourth time we've done this figure, and this is the only time the lion face has come out so derpy. Why is it, like down sloped like a gorilla why is it like he looks like he got flattened by jerry's frying pan why we've done so many lion transformers they all had like the nose projecting they all had like the, like the the correct details that they were depicted with in their fiction no 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 flat face lion that's what we're getting here it's weird it's super weird but hey uh the rest of the toy looks good <laughs> the rest of the toy looks good it's just not uh, someone's gonna make a, some fan, some fan, some a third party company is gonna make some replacement face for that, right? Right? You don't even have to dismantle it, you just glue it on. Yeah, uh, it's so weird. He's not, he's also not, uh, Beast Wars 2 universe, he's just maximal Leo Prime. Oh, well. Like I said, most of him looks good. It's just, uh, that face, though. That face, though. Oh, well, I'm going to keep him in robot mode most of the time anyway, so what do I care? So, that's the loadout. That is pretty much all the toys they revealed for Transformers. Um, it's a ton. It's an absolute ton. And it all looks so, so good. There's a few reservations I have, and I definitely want to see more of the Dinobots. But, yeah, it looks really, really cool. Now, there's also a poster that goes with this. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I wish I could zoom in a little bit on this, because I, I don't know how to, uh, I don't know quite how to do that. But, yeah, if we, uh, here, let me see if I can, let me see if I can get away with this. So, if I, yeah, there we go. Can't zoom in much, but we can zoom in a little bit. So we see the Junkions at the bottom where we get to see all the other ones we have to look forward to. We got the sidecar motorcycle. We've got two of them connected onto Scrap Hook, which that's really cool to see that they uh, work that way. Uh, and then we have the Mad Max car here on the left. I love the look of that. Uh, let's see, moving upward. We're using the live stream version of the poster, by the way. So you see here on the left near my window right now, Crosscut. That does not appear in the version that they're uploading and that the fan sites are reposting. It's just normal skids. Uh, but Crosscut would be far more welcome at this point, I think. So I'm hoping that the version in the live stream was the current one, the new one. And it's and the, and, uh, it's not something like, oh, well, we swapped it out because we're actually just going to re-release skids. Please don't re-release skids. So, let's see, what else do we have? We have all of the Insecticons present. Kickback is already out, and we know uh, Shrapnel and Bombshell are on the way. This just kind of confirms, yeah. Uh, hope Maybe by the end of uh, Legacy Evolution, since they're showing off both. Who knows? Yeah, we got Hotshot on the side. Axel Zuka firing. We also have him using a Junkie on Shield. Let's see, uh, up here in the top right, Laser Optimus Prime. Uh, I guess he's just, he's probably getting a reissue at some point. They've been doing that a lot with Primes from one series to another. We've got a Quintesson ship and the Nemesis side by side flying in. It's not the first time that Hasbro has dropped in the Nemesis as an Easter egg. So it definitely feels like it's foreshadowing something. 
if it's going to get the same treatment that the Ark did, I think that's a fantastic idea. Uh, yeah, it'd be super cool to have both of them. Uh, everyone, of course, has pointed out, yes, that is Armada Optimus Prime emerging at the very top. Keep in mind, the last time we got one of these posters, well, at least one of the more recent times we got one of these posters, uh, there were characters in there that never made it. We went out, a Sabertooth Tiger Fossilizer didn't make it out. Gears didn't make it out. So, a Polar Claw. We missed out on a Polar Claw they were apparently planning at one point. So, don't put too much faith in the posters, but it does feel like it's such a prominent spot, I can't see them not doing an Armada Optimus if they're going to make him that prominent. What he's going to be, if it's going to be the mold from five years ago, if it's going to be brand new, if he's going to be uh, like a Voyager without a trailer, or if he's going to be like a Commander class with a fully functioning trailer, we don't know yet. No idea. But fingers crossed that we get like a really nice interpretation of him. And then we go, let's go back over here. I got lot, we got Leo Prime, we got, uh, we got Needle Nose. And then we look at the top left here, past breakdown. We have what I think is the most interesting Easter egg on the poster, which is a space bridge, specifically the type of space bridge you saw in Animated. We know that there is Animated coming to Legacy. If this is foreshadowing something that we're getting in Evolution, or if this is something that we're getting down the line, we do not know. But this is just another little promise that Animated is on the way, which is not a bad thing. All right, so we definitely have uh, that to look forward to. Also, yeah, it looks like... Uh, it, from this, I'm going to guess that for the combining Dinobots, we're going to see Swoop and Grimlock before we see the final components with me. Snarl, who is, he's always a little late. And, of course, uh, Scar, who is... Everyone, I think, is expecting to be the name of our uh, new Dinobot based on computer listings. But that's going to do it for me. If I ha finally got to talk, I've been waiting for like a week almost to talk about all the stuff that dropped at PulseCon because it's super exciting stuff. And yes, there's a Hot Shot toy on the way. Oh, that's not going to haunt my ats at all. But thank you guys for joining me. Uh, thank you for your patience and uh, thank you for all the words of support while I was out and barely able to post anything. But uh, it's nice to know that you know every, every, everyone was concerned for me. I'm fine. My house is fine. My family's fine. My shop is fine. Everything's fine. So we, we made it through the storm and now we are back. Back to our normally regularly scheduled random videos. So thank you again. Thank you again for watching. Thank you again for supporting and I will see you next time. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.